is good stuff. Now, as we start to track that possibility of seeing what's going on in that sky with the uh, green lights of the auroras, you can only do it if the skies are clear. And ah, there is the big caveat of living in western New York this time of year. You could have the best display in the world, but if Mother Nature does not cooperate, you will never know it. These are largely rain showers, lake enhanced rain showers. We start off in Orleans County, kind of narrow bands. It's got that typical lake effect look. You see a pair of them now streaming into Monroe County. Both of these are kind of splitting downtown. Rochester. We got one on the north side from about Greece to Arondacoit going over the southern point of the bay and then streaming off to the east from there. Another one that will dart southward from Henrietta. But I got my eyes on what's the cloud cover situation look like. I want to see some breaks in the overcast. Now I'm going to be upfront and honest with you with this. Uh, this would have been much better for us if this Aurora thing happened tomorrow night than tonight. Now this is not a completely overcast sky. If you look close, you can see a few donut holes in here. Are they enough that's going to give you a chance to see anything if it happens? Probably not, but it's perhaps not impossible. It's something we're going to kind of keep an eye on here, but you know, that is our reality of having to deal with this. So here's the deal with it. It's kind of what's happening. We've had this energy from the sun. It has made impact with the earth a couple of hours ago. This is the stuff that generates the northern lights. Our window of opportunity, we're kind of debating between is it going to be tonight or tomorrow night? Both are still in play, but there's more of a lean toward this one, given some of that new timing. And you ask the question, what could go wrong with this and where we can't see it? Well, a lot. One of them is the clouds or the other one being what has happened tonight with the arrival of that energy being faster than expected. We talk about predictions are often wrong with these. I'm going to throw things over to meteorologist Christine Gregory. Christine, we've had some of these updates knowing that this energy has come in earlier than expected. What does it mean for us in terms of our prospects of maybe seeing something? Yeah, so the latest update in this coronal mass inject or ejection that we call a CME. So it's happening right now. It's arrived. That's what we know right now. And that's all fine and dandy. Again, CME being a fancy word for being energy coming off of the sun that's able to generate these northern lights. Again, that's all fine and dandy, but we're dealing with a couple main problems. One, we're socked in the cloud cover all night, but we're holding on to the hope that this ejection is going to last well into tomorrow and hold on just long enough so that we'll be be able to see it. The problem is, again, it's going to be daytime by the time I think this pro probably peak. Prime viewing, though, for those in Europe, because once it's daytime here, it's going to be nighttime for them. So we're still holding on to the hope that this ejection is going to linger all the way past tomorrow during the day um, so that we might be able to get, you know, something to linger. The show is still going to be going on, though. During the day, we just won't be able to see it. And again, uh, the G3 is how we measure uh, the strength of these coronal mass ejections the G3 being a particularly strong one. Ideal situation is it's dark out, it's a G3, but it very well could be a G2, a G1 by the time we get to tomorrow night. So uh, th could we see something linger into tomorrow evening? It's possible, but again, it depends on a lot of things, Eric. Yeah, great job explaining that, Christine. So you heard her use those letters and numbers, G2, G3. Let's talk a little bit about that. We rank these kind of like the Saffir Simpson scale of hurricanes. Yeah, cat one, two, three, four, five, bigger means stronger, worse. At the level G3, which is where we think this goes tonight. This is where typically the aurora would be visible. You see, there we are, Rochester, New York. The concern now with this earlier arrival is this might be backing off into a G2 or a G1 by tomorrow night when the skies clear out, which would push this too far to the north. So I'm less optimistic, but not entirely at the point of saying we're not going to be able to see anything. We kind of just take this hour by hour and see how things go.